obviously, probably, I would say, obsessed with politics, given the background of where you came from, right? That's why I bought your book recently, and I'm reading. <laughs> no, I'm saying so. People who are as obsessed with politics, if not more than I am, uh, have opinions that are very valuable. Well, I don't have to ask you a leading question, as I will. You do agree that this country is going in the wrong direction, don't you? Absolutely, absolutely, hundred percent. I'm devastated, and if Trump will win, I will sleep better than ever. <laughs> See, we all fear that Obama is doing the exact opposite of what the American people know to be the right thing to do. In fact, we all know it. We don't just think it. We know it. And he's experimenting with systems of governance that were tried and failed in the ex-Soviet Union. Isn't that also correct? Absolutely. I heard everything he was saying back in Soviet Union in Russia, and I couldn't understand how American people could buy the nonsense he was saying, like, we'll build a beautiful future communism. This is his whole agenda. Was. And the yeah, it's frightening. It really is frightening to see how dumb the American electorate is. But, you know, Santayana, the Spanish philosopher, wrote a long time ago, those who do not know history are condemned to repeat it. And in this country, that is oh so true, especially when you see the insanity of the media, how they continuously narcotize the people with pornography and violence on a daily basis. And eventually the mind becomes numb, where they don't even care about politics. And then they start to say stupid things such as, oh, they're all the same, oh, it won't make any difference whether Trump wins or anyone else wins, it's all corrupt. That's utter rubbish. It's not true. And the proof is, look what one man can do uh, in the negative. Look what Obama has done in the negative. This is what one man can do in the negative. Can you imagine what one man can do in the positive? I, I hope they will have lots of positivity coming after Trump will win. And the other thing is, in 2012, when Obama won, you know, I was only one in my um, department who voted for um, Romney in 15 or 18 were for Obama. That's how they... Uh, what, you mean even Ru even Russian... Are you saying even Russian emigrant friends voted for, for Obama? Well, yes, they did. They did, and after I spoke with them and right now... But why would they do it coming from a Soviet system? Didn't they... Weren't they able to read the tea leaves that Obama was spreading before all of us to see with our own eyes? We knew who he was. He came from a communistic background. So Russian people bought everything on his Medicare, on his health insurance, and that's oh, that's all. Oh, they wanted the Soviet medical system, and so that's all they cared about. I see what you're saying. So the very things that they fled uh, Russia for, they thought they could have here piecemeal. In other words, they thought they could have socialized medicine without a socialized government. Is that it? Is it? It's absolutely correct. And right now, I educated several people, and they're waiting for me to tell for whom to vote. <laughs> well, I'll send you a copy of Government Zero to give out to a neighbor and tell him to pass it around the apartment building uh, before the election. Are, are you calling from the East Coast, by the way? Actually, I'm in Denver, Colorado. I live uh, in Denver for 20 years, almost. Interesting. Well, I didn't know there was such a large Russian community there, and I... Wish you well. You're about to celebrate the Russian New Year, aren't you, in a week or so? Well, yeah, it's a Russian tradition to celebrate New Year. No, I know. I want, I, when is the Russian New Year, by the way? I know it's not our New Year. When exactly is it on the Gregorian calendar? Well, actually, tonight is a Russian uh, Orthodox Christmas. Really? Oh, I wish that I had some Russian friends in San Francisco. I have, have to tell you, I was once living in New York teaching college and I had Russian friends and they invited me to a Russian Christmas party it was so amazing they cooked a geese they cooked ducks it was a lot of vodka and a lot of friendship and it was very warm and very loving and I certainly wish you a good evening tonight thank you for calling I'll be back in a moment on the Savage Nation I think throughout my political career people have underestimated me Nobody, but nobody, believes I would have been elected mayor of the city of Burlington. Uh, nobody believes I would have been elected to the United States Congress. He dropped his accent. He's not I even have to get elected to the Senate. I have to defeat the wealthiest guy in the state of Vermont. Uh, 
so what's I happened to him? Don't underestimate the message. This is awful. Forth to the American people. All right, let's drop it. I thought Sanders was still sounding like uh, the real Sanders from Brooklyn. He's changed his uh, elocution. He must be taking lessons from Emily on how to sound like an American. And uh, he's not fun anymore. So he says that uh, Clinton is not the nominee. He said, don't underestimate me on, on message. And then we have Ryan, old Ryan, on North Korea. Yeah. Now, I don't know about Trump playing. I'd rather have Trump live than to play Trump, you know, canned on the Savage Nation. Which Ryan is this? Rep Ryan? There isn't a gun show loophole. This is a distraction. Yeah, that was a fake a little fake from uh, Ryan, the uh, quizzling of our time. I, this is all standard stuff that I don't think I want to bother you with. And uh, Sanders attacking Wall Street is the standard cry of the communist, you know, that Wall Street's evil. Uh, I mean, did they ever think this through? Have they actually thought through what their attacks would lead to? That if they crushed Wall Street, then the entire economy would collapse? Do they have any idea what they're talking about? You know, in my experience with leftists, I find that they're... Basically, poor people, except the real rich ones, who are, are so different than the poor leftists. But guys like Sanders who shoot their mouth off, attacking Wall Street and the billionaire class and the millionaire class, they think they're appealing to the poor people of America who are going to rally behind them. It's standard socialist practice, practices. It may work in certain quarters. But basically, everyone in the media is a millionaire, uh, even those who pretend not to be. I mean, that's a reality. They all pretend that they're poor, but they're not. Do you know anyone in the major media who's not wealthy? I don't. I haven't met him yet. So what's this attacking the millionaire and billionaire class? Who do they think they're they're appealing to? So now you have Sanders in clip 11. It's worth listening to, to hear how hollow it really is. Number 11, please. Greed is not good. And here is a New Year's resolution that I will keep if elected president. And that is... If Wall Street does not end its greed, we will end it for them. Oh, oh what a little demagogue. My God, a little petty Stalin there. Like a petty Lenin, like a little Lenin, a mini Lenin, a mini me Lenin. Classic, the same type that overthrew the Tsar in Russia. That's all. He'd like to start a revolution. He still thinks the Beatles are alive and well, and he's leading the Yellow Submarine. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. What do we got there on the callers? Uh, you're open to callers. One or two open lines. Let's go look at WMAL in Washington. Ruben, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Doctor Savage? I'll make this as quick as I can. You and I and all of your listeners are witnessing the introduction of a new era. You know, the likes of which have never been seen before, and that's tyranny in an information age. What the United States has been doing is building a system, this is for decades now, they've been building a system of control. And years ago, they've started to um, store all this data. Now they've stockpiled information on hundreds of millions of citizens. Since then, they've been, as you've talked about many times on your show, defining what speech and rhetoric is derogatory and threatening or by any means uh, incriminating. They'll then apply this to this massive amount of information on all of its citizens. And I'm not just talking about criminal information. I'm talking about any type of, you know, social media posts, purchases, anything that can be used against someone. And what this is going to essentially... So you're saying, Ruben, you're saying that the metadata is going to be used to control the populations around the world? Think of all of the, or at least in the United States. Well, we don't need metadata to see that we have a lunatic running North Korea. How come they're not controlling him? I think it's much more in their interest to control their own people. Um, so, in other words, a threat for, from a hydrogen bomb is good for the for the the elites that run the world. It scares everyone. Is that it? And that, and now we need Obama to save us from uh, from Kim Jong mentally ill. Obama will not save us from King Jong, mentally from Lil Kim, as he's known, um, because Obama is is not a part of the solution. There, this administration and others before it 
Um, All right. Look, I, I don't know what to say about that, Ruben. I can't even respond to it. I know this, that Christmas Eve tonight around the world, for millions of Orthodox Christians across the globe, not just Russians, do you know that tonight is Christmas Eve for millions of Orthodox Christians across the globe? And those who have not yet uh, done so, they're getting ready for one of their major holidays celebrated on January 7th, Christmas. And in Moscow, believers have gathered for the Christmas Eve service in the iconic Christ the Savior Cathedral despite the biting cold, which, as you know, is one of the reasons that the American left hates Russia. This is an ironic situation that you should, you have to understand what's going on here. You would think the American left would still be in love with Russia. But the reason they're not in love with Russia is because Russia is no longer an atheist nation. Russia is more of a, cap a free capitalist state in some ways than is America. And Russia is certainly more of a Christian nation than is Obama's America, which is more of an atheist slash Islamist nation than ever imaginable. And that's why Russia is hated by the elites in Obama's Red Guard. They're diehard old line communists. Isn't that an irony? irony? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. It is your favorite radio show, the Savage Nation. So if you care to join the favorite show of uh, the time slot that I'm in, you call us at 855-400-7282. If I sound a little tired, it's because I am. I admit it, I'm very tired right now. I've had an extremely long day after a very long uh, weekend and a very long month and a very long year. And frankly, I think I need a vacation. Now, I generally take a vacation after everyone comes back and both the resorts and highways are empty. <laughs> I may have to take a couple of days. I think 2015 is catching up with me or I'm on another calendar. I don't know what calendar I'm on, but I feel like I'm at the end of the year, not at the beginning of a year. I don't know about you. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm really ready for a good, a good week off now, which I cannot take because uh, the news is crazy. I mean, with the hydrogen bomb and the gun grabbers and this and that. And people are worried, and uh, you know, if you're used to a certain show, you have to uh, you have to provide something for the people. Barracks bunk. A civilian intruder lived and ate undetected at Fort Bragg. And now uh, people are asking: Is the Pentagon turning Fort Hood into a daycare center? Interesting. Very, very interesting. WABC. Sean, thanks for holding from New York City. Go ahead, please. I have a. Quick little uh, look-see into the North Korean thing. Um, they do stuff for money. Um, and recently, there's been a windfall of cash since the uh, nuclear deal in Iran. Um, maybe an order was put in. Yeah, the Chinese might be pulling some strings, just a you know, little distraction because of what they're doing in the South China Sea. But the next step in nuclear development is miniaturization, to build a bigger, better bomb. We've seen that in history. Now, the Iranians aren't going to hit us with ICBMs. That's been tried. I mean, the standoff between us and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. They want something small. And that's what the Koreans are doing. You can't hide an H-bomb test. And they know that. So they have to, you know, their ego is at stake. They have to, you know, bolster to the world that they're this advanced nation and, you know, join the big club of, you know, real nations. They just look in the market for stuff. And there's plenty of... Who? Are you saying North Korea is using the new claim as an advertising ploy? No, I think that they can't hide the fact that they went that far in the next step of development. And what they're doing is they have to own up to it. You know, the, 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 the seismographs show that something major happened. You know, I mean... Yeah, it was, six, it was a six kiloton explosion, which would be a small nuke, I mean, enough to devastate a city in America or anywhere else, but it was still not a hydrogen bomb level. We understand that, but... You're saying it was a, if it was a miniaturized nuclear device, that's saleable? Is that what you're saying? Sure. The trigger, it's the trigger for the fusion bomb. You need, you need a fission explosion to explode the fusion bomb. A fusion the bomb. I understand that. And as a caller said in, uh, two hours ago, a miniaturized bomb, nuclear bomb, could fit inside a thermos, a thermos bottle. That's really worrisome, isn't it? Sure it is. Sure it is. And that's the new way of warfare. It's not the way right. it was back in the 50s. Well, isn't that great? The world's out of control, and the president says nothing today. That's, that says everything. That even Hillary Clinton comes out and uh, chastises North Korea for this insanity. 
And the president who shot his mouth off yesterday, which seemed like a 